Good morning, world. It's Motivational Mondays. I am Delvar giving you your motivation as you give the world your best. And of course, giving the world your best starts with you. But the topic of today starts and ends with this here, treating people the way we wish to be treated. As a mom, um, I feel like you can learn a lot from a three-year-old, um, really, truly. You know, when you just sit back and talk to her about life and the things that she's interested in and the things that affect her day are so simple. Her goal in life every single day is to be happy. And if only we could all live our lives like that. The day I had the opportunity to meet Brooklyn was a day that I'll never forget. It was her birthday. She genuinely just wanted to meet the garbage guy. And I genuinely wanted to meet her because she was just the cutest thing ever, and her parents allowed her to be her and interact with someone who she did not know. She started to notice the garbage truck. She just had started to learn how to talk as well, so she could say truck, and she always wanted to point it out. Trying to encourage her to learn and to start knowing things, we would make a point of talking about the garbage truck every Thursday when it was drive by our house, and so she became excited to see it. So we would make sure that we were at the window every week, and then, you know, it really became a fascination with the garbage truck. Shortly after we started noticing the driver, and, you know, he would wave and honk and smile at us. For almost a year, we had this thing on Thursday, we'd go find the garbage truck. And I thought to myself, I really need to do something nice for him. It was a Thursday. It happened to be my daughter's third birthday. And we had birthday cupcakes made already. So I said to Brooklyn, do you want to meet the garbage man today? Why don't we give him one of your birthday cupcakes? We wrapped one up and we went and walked out to the corner and waited for him to come. And as he turned the corner to come into our neighborhood, we saw him and she was jumping up and down and waving and so excited. And he saw us and pulled over right in front of our house. I jumped out of the truck. I had to look down because uh, she's a three-year-old. I'm 6'2". And she was at awe. And so seeing that, Kids tell the truth. Do I think happiness is contagious? Yes. A simple wave, a simple smile, uh, breaks down walls and barriers. I spread happiness to others in the most simplest form. They say that money can't buy happiness, but they're wrong. <laughs> um, it's just what you do with the money, what you buy with it. My wife and I were really in the market for a boat and really planned to pull the trigger within a week or two. It really dawned on me that instead of buying this boat, I could invest in this kindergarten class at Rio Vista Elementary School who's been learning about college but didn't really have the means to pay for it. I could invest in those 27 kids and really make a big difference. Buying a boat at that point seemed pretty selfish. A bright opportunity for an entire class of 26 kindergartners. Marty Burbank wants to pay for every student here to go to college. Worries about the future are over thanks to a million dollar gift from a man trying to make a difference. One couple giving up so much, but getting back in return, a gift that is priceless. Hi, my name is San. I'm Mari Porpeng's wife. My first impression to Mari, he has a very kind, bright smile. The way I would describe San is smart, determined, hardworking, hardworking, <laughs> uh, and hardworking. She, uh, she's a very hard worker. I learned a lot about generosity and philanthropy through Marty. 
I didn't even know there's such a way I could really pay for it. When we first made this pledge, we didn't really tell anybody about it. The only people that knew about it was the teacher and the principal at the school. And, and that's kind of how we, we planned to leave it. The principal had told somebody, that person posted it on Facebook, and the next thing you know, we started getting a lot of attention. Through that attention, we had an opportunity to really influence others, to help other people to, to do more. I am a college professor in early child education. Early childhood is the most critical time of your life and how to become a person. Education changed my life in so many ways. Sun grew up in Korea at a time when the economy in Korea was pretty bad. She lived in a neighborhood that didn't have indoor plumbing. She was very interested in academics and throughout her life she got academic awards. But when she finished high school and wanted to go to college, she didn't have the resources to go to college. My aunt helped me to go into college. Without that help, I will not be here. It's time for me to give it back. If we can help just a few children get educated, get careers where they can earn a living, we can really make a difference. I am spreading happiness through opening doors and giving opportunity to these young children and their family. When I can make an impact on somebody's life when I can do something for somebody else. That brings me a great deal of joy. I feel blessed that I have those opportunities, um, but I think most people can have those opportunities if you just purposely look for them. I absolutely believe that happiness is contagious. It's changed my life making this pledge. We weren't blessed with the children of our own, but now we are blessed with the 27. Because we're family, we love and we care for each other, and we'll fight for each other, and we'll find ways to make life work. And to me, that's one of the most powerful, redeeming stories we could tell. Family, to me, it means community, fellowship, love, friendship, most importantly. We want to share love through music. For us, the things that matter most in everything we do is to spread love, to spread a joy, to spread happiness. In the journey to getting where we are now, there is so much of the personal aspect that comes with it. I know that we were struggling a bit to decide who we wanted to be as a band and who we wanted to be as artists, and it took like seven years. Happiness is a big part of our writing process. Not everyone is happy, and not everyone chooses to be happy either. So. In our writing of our music, we want that joy and that happiness to be shared with ourselves, of course, but with anyone who hears even a second of our music. Because sometimes you don't allow yourself to cry when you should have, and then eventually you hear that song that makes you cry and you realize that you're finally having that release that you needed two weeks ago. And music can access that part of your emotional state that we can't even do on our own. I think it starts with Echo Smith's message first, that everyone is included and it's all about happiness and love and that's really the center of everything and the rest just falls into place. You attract what you put out and they definitely put out a lot of love and happiness. I'm excited for this show tonight because we get to thank a group of fans for being a part of this journey with us, but specifically two fans, Natalie and Rocky, because they have driven miles and miles to see so many shows, I think over 20 and they've been there from the beginning. They've been a part of this experience. They've become friends to us. They've been just close companions with us in this journey. If I could sit down with each and every one of our fans, I would love to just say, Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, this means a lot to us because this is actually our 10th year being a band, which is kind of crazy. Um, but we're glad that we could do something so intimate with you guys and get to just hang out together. And it means a lot to us because we've been through a lot as a band in the past three to four years have been incredible because of you guys. So this is sort of a thank you for everything that you've done for us. And um, yeah, thank you guys for being here. This song is called Talking Dreams. Let's run our 
Music is sort of like a conversation with our fans. The conversation is usually about accepting who you are and being happy with who you are. Music can definitely break barriers. It can tear down walls that have been there for years. And I really hope and think that our music does that. I try to wake up in the morning, take a deep breath, and remind myself, today is another opportunity to spread love and happiness to anyone that I meet. I spread happiness through music and the fact that I get to create something to spread love, to spread joy, to spread happiness all around this planet is a gift. Thank you so much. Most kids come to us with a lid on. And when you make a connection with that kid, that opens that lid up. You have to make a connection with a student first. Then you can inspire them. Let them see that you really care and you value them. My name is Kenneth Joyner, and I am the co-founder of Boys With A Purpose. Boys With A Purpose is a mentoring program that we started through our school. Myself and Mr. Nelson got together and we just talked about, you know, similar programs that we were both a part of when we were growing up. We just felt like it was needed. And so we just said, hey, let's just get started. My name is Raymond Nelson and I am from Charleston, South Carolina. Kids pretty much learn from their role models uh, what to do and what not to do. Every kid has a story and I enjoy finding out that story and seeing how I can help. We like to say that telling is in teaching and teaching is in training. The students that I'm teaching now, they're going through life training. The purpose is to allow them to see that they have a purpose. They're not just here to float. And so that's what we try to do. We try to help young boys find their gifts, find their talents, but most importantly, find their purpose. During our sessions, we teach kids social skills, proper etiquette, and appropriate manners and we would meet every Wednesday. We would have the boys dress in their Sunday's best. Our motto is uh, look good, feel good, do good. If you look good, you feel good, you're gonna do good. Kids might seem like they don't like structure, but they actually do. And they love someone who's gonna be real with them. And they can tell if you're genuine or not. If you're not real with them, they're not gonna be real with you. I am personally spreading happiness through the program by sending out love and encouragement. At the end of the day, we're teaching kids how to conduct themselves and how to be young gentlemen. And we have to lead by example, because the minute we slip up, they're going to see it. If you're going to teach kids something, you need to live by that rule also. Mr. Nelson and Mr. Joyner are spreading happiness to the community by teaching our children proper etiquette and molding them to be the perfect gentleman. Like, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate the hard work, the effort they put in with these kids. Like, they truly take them on as their children. So I'm happy about that. We say that growing up without your father is like being right-handed and being missing your right arm. You don't even know it. So you have to do everything with your left hand. Guess what? You got two hands. And you can use them both to get you through any situation. Whatever it is you want to be, all we ask is that you be the best version of yourself. That's it. Be the very best that you can be. Spreading happiness fills every fiber of your soul, of your being and makes you want to pay it forward, makes you want to spread happiness to other people.